Hello, this is the Disaster Recovery Pro, and today we're going to continue our video series going over some of the basic concepts and best practices of disaster recovery. In today's video, we're going to talk about the RTO and RPO metrics. RTO is recovery time objective, and RPO is recovery point objective. We'll explain what they are and how they're used. We'll also talk about why they're important, because they're not just metrics, they're actually the parameters that define the requirements for a recovery solution. So they're really important to understand. So first we'll take a look at the RTO, that's the recovery time objective. RTO stands for recovery time objective. This is the amount of time a business is willing to endure their IT services being unavailable and is the period of time in which a disaster recovery solution should be able to restore functionality as measured from start of outage to the point where operations can resume. We can see this idea demonstrated on the chart below. We'll be going along at our normal operations, our website will be running, then some disaster event happens. Let's say an earthquake or a fire takes our website offline. We'll have a period of downtime while we're executing our recovery, and then at that point we'll resume operations. The idea is the recovery time objective is the amount of downtime we want to allow. We want to make sure that our recovery solution can recover within the recovery time objective. So let's take a closer look at what the recovery time objective means. Now the recovery time objective should be defined by the business requirements and or the audit requirements. Recovery time objective is something that you want to know before you build your recovery solution. It should be designed to meet that RTO. The recovery solution itself should not dictate to the business what the RTO is. The RTO is the business's requirement for maximum allowable downtime. It's a requirement for the recovery solution. It's not a consequence of the recovery solution. If an RTO is unachievable, yeah, then you should go back to the business and renegotiate it. They may be asking something that's unreasonable for the technology that you have available, but in general, the business defines what that recovery objective is. So when we want to come up with our RTO, we have to make a business decision. So that's going to be a business continuity decision rather than a technology decision. We're going to have to weigh the costs associated with the outage or downtime against the cost of a DR solution for a given RTO or speed of recovery. In general, a faster recovery with a short RTO is going to be much more expensive than a longer recovery with a long RTO in general. So when we talk about the cost of an outage, that cost isn't just a financial cost. It could be the potential lost business during your downtime because people are going to be trying to maybe trying to get to your website to buy things and it's not going to be there. Or it could be less tangible things like reputation or public relations impact, which can have a very powerful effect on a business. And it's really a business decision to weigh those factors. This is where the idea of a BIA or business impact analysis comes in. This is a report that, well, really deserves its own video. So we're just going to really briefly talk about it here. Uh, that's basically a report that's going to prioritize your business functions and kind of give you an idea of what the costs are associated with. And it's a key thing for figuring out what the cost of your downtime for any particular function is going to be. So in a large organization that's very complicated, has many departments, functions, and moving parts, one RTO probably is not going to apply for the entire organization. You can get really granular with this. You can assign a different RTO to every business application, every department, and every function. What usually happens in practice is you'll group together your applications, business components, etc., by the RTOs you've assigned to them. So you'll group them into tiers, your highly critical tier or your tier zero, which is usually your infrastructure and underlying services will have the fastest RTO or the shortest RTO rather, and your less critical systems will have longer RTOs. So you'll have a whole range of tiers, maybe two, three tiers per your organization, depending how complicated it is. So let's examine our second metric, the recovery point objective or RPO. RPO stands for recovery point objective. This is essentially a measure of the acceptable data loss in case of an event. It determines how far back to go for your last known good data to recover. So if we look at our chart, we can see that our recovery point objective is the amount of time between our last available good backup or snapshot and our disaster event. This data is going to be lost when we recover. So when we pick back up at the green arrow, we're basically picking back up with our data at the point where it is at the purple arrow. 
Uh, in modern solutions, recovery point objectives are usually pretty close. Um, I say most of the time about an hour, but in some cases, if we're dealing with tape backups or disk backups, you have to go back further than that. So no solution is going to be completely lossless. Even if you want your RPO to be zero, you may have some in-progress transactions that get interrupted by this disaster event that aren't going to be complete and possibly corrupt. So there is a tiny bit of wiggle room in there, but you really want that recovery point objective to define your backup and replication policies that are going to impact your recovery solution. Once again, the RPO or recovery point objective is a key requirement that should be defined by the business before you come up with your recovery solution. And again, that RPO is really going to define how that recovery solution works. It also have a big impact on how you do your backups and replication in production and your general IT practices have to be aligned with what they need to do to meet that RPO. Otherwise, your recovery solution is never going to work. Once again, formulating your RPO is a matter of making a business decision, balancing the cost of outage or data loss in this case versus the cost of the solution. In general, a shorter RPO is going to be more expensive solution. Longer RPO is going to dictate a less expensive solution. So when you're doing your balancing of costs act, well, you need to consider that any data that gets accrued in production, any transactions that get processed after that last known good point and before your disaster happens is data that's going to be lost and needs to be considered in your cost model. So if we're talking about a large organization, you can have granular RPOs as well as granular RTOs. And generally when you're looking at the tier structure that we talked about earlier, tiers are grouped by things with the same RTO and RPO. So your tier zero may have a one hour RTO and a 15 minute RPO. Your tier two may have a four hour RTO and a two hour RPO or something along those lines. So when we put all this into practice, we come up with a third metric and that's our recovery time actual or recovery time achievable, depending on how you prefer. This is an actual metric rather than a requirement. This is an actual measure of the recovery time actually demonstrated in a disaster recovery test run. And the important thing we want to look at is the gap between the recovery time objective and this RTA. It's an important metric to track because it gives you the health of your recovery solution. So your RTA is an actual metric defined by testing results, measures the effectiveness of your solution or the execution of that solution. Generally, an RTA that's smaller than the RTO, it indicates, yeah, you've had a successful test and you're doing good and you're within your RTO. An RTA larger than the RTO, that indicates a failure to meet the business goals. And again, if you test your DR solution regularly, you should be able to trend your RTA over time, see if it's increasing or decreasing. That's going to tell you some important information to make business decisions on. So the RTA trend can tell you a lot of things and help you with a lot of different business decisions. If you're consistently under RTO, maybe that means that you're in a position where you can offer the business a smaller RTO and less data loss. If your RTA is growing over time, maybe that means your recovery solution may fit you for now, but some point in the future, you're going to outgrow it and you may have to rework it at that time. And if your RTA is consistently above your RTO, well, that means maybe your solution is insufficient, maybe your staff isn't good enough at executing it, or possibly that RTO target is unreasonable or unachievable with the technology you have and you need to rethink things. So let's summarize what we've learned today. So your RTO and RPO, they're your two most important requirements for devising a recovery solution. Everything about that solution is going to go back to what's the RTO and RPO I have to meet. Your RTO and RPO should be determined by a business decision and should balance the cost of an outage against the cost of a solution, and this should also include audit and compliance requirements as well. Your practices and application architecture and production may have to be re-examined in order to be recoverable and meet your RTO and RPO requirements, especially the RPO. Solutions with a more aggressive RTO and RPO target will tend to be more expensive than solutions with less aggressive RTO and RPOs. And finally, you need to test your DR regularly and track the recovery time actual trend because that will give you important information to base your future business decisions on. And of course, more importantly, it'll help you maintain a disaster ready posture at all times because you never know when that disaster is going to happen. 
So thanks for watching. If you found this topic interesting and you want to learn more about disaster recovery and business continuity, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. This is a Disaster Recovery Pro. I just want to let you know that you should hope for the best and plan for the worst. Thanks a lot.